All right, if you're anything like me, you've been holding off on upgrading your computer. You've been waiting, you've been hoping, and the time has come. Apple has released some amazing laptops that will make your life better. Let's talk about it. On today's episode of the vlog, we are gonna be talking about the new MacBook Pros that Apple recently announced, and boy, are they tasty. Apple has released some amazing specs. They've updated their CPUs, their GPUs, but the question is, what is the best setup for video editors? And this could apply to photographers as well. What is the best setup? Because it's kind of hard to figure out in terms of the needs and what we should be focused on in terms of bringing our work to life. Recently, I found a really good breakdown by a Los Angeles editor by the name of Larry Jordan. Larry did a really good job of breaking down the size, the memory, the storage, the GPU, and the processor that we need to make decisions about when purchasing these machines. And it's a lot to kind of go through and understand, but he did a great job of breaking these things down. To start, let's talk about the size. Currently, the MacBook Pro comes in two sizes, 14 inches and 16 inches. Now, this really depends on what you're doing in terms of your workflow. For me, I like to edit in a lot of different places. I like to edit at a coffee shop, I like to edit on my couch, and I sometimes like to hook up to my beautiful monitor that I rarely use. But I think it really depends on what you're doing. If you're constantly hooking up to an external monitor, this may not be that big of a deal for you because you will have screen real estate on that external monitor. Larry's suggestion is go with a 16 inch. You never know where you're gonna need that screen real estate, so it's important to be thinking about these things. Next, let's talk about storage. On the base models, of the MacBook Pros, they start at 512 gigabytes and they scale all the way up to eight terabytes, which is a lot of storage internally on these machines. One thing to think about um, as we think about storage, 512 gigabytes is not a lot of space. I've filled up this computer on several occasions. I've had to delete things. I've had to clear cache files. So that will happen a lot faster. And the other thing to be thinking about is the amount of storage needed for some of these applications. Larry's recommendation is one terabyte. However, use your own discretion, two would also be fine. Next, let's talk about memory. And memory is really important. If you're doing anything with HDR workflows, 4K or 8K um, footage, or even multi-cam editing, this is crucial because, let's face it, that is very memory intensive and more memory means that you'll be able to get these things done faster. It starts at 16 gigabytes and scales all the way to 64. According to Larry and his recommendations, you want around 32 gigabytes of memory. This will allow you to do these different processes faster and it won't bog down your machine, especially as we get heavier and heavier footage. Larry's recommendation though, 32 gigs. I think 32 gigs is a safe spot. However, again, you can scale up to 64 gigs. Do it within reason though and what your needs are though. Let's talk about the GPU. Let's face the reality of the world that we live in today as editors. All three major editors, Premiere, Final Cut, and Resolve are really processor intensive. And what that basically means is the GPU is focused on anything that is happening on the screen, any of those effects that you have applied, and the CPU, on the other hand, is dealing with the interface. So what does this really mean? How much is needed for the work that we're doing? Do we need 14 cores, or do we need to scale up and max it out at 32 cores? If you're doing work that requires a lot of effects, or you're doing a lot of rendering, I would suggest upping the amount of cores in terms of what your GPU can do. Larry's recommendation is 16 cores. However, you can up to like say 24 or 32 based off of your needs. Finally, let's move on to the processor. Should you stick with like say the M1 Pro or upgrade to the M1 Max? The important thing to understand about these chips that Apple has developed is the amount of cores that are in them for rendering. Apple has added dedicated cores for encoding and decoding ProRes files. What this basically means is ProRes files will have a reduced amount of volume and energy put on the processors, meaning it will be easier on the computers to chug through these files faster. The other important thing to discuss is they're both capable of dealing with H.264s and HEVC files. 
if you're doing limited video and you're not really working that much in video and you're doing other things, stick with the M1 Pro. However, if you're editing on a regular basis and it's the majority of what you're doing, go with the M1 Max. Now that we've talked about all the different components that are found in these computers, let's talk about what are the three best options. If you're looking for a high performance with access to editing but aren't really doing a lot of principal editing, think about getting the 16-inch MacBook Pro with the M1 Pro chip, 10 cores of CPU, 16 cores of GPU, 32 gigs of RAM, and one terabyte of SSD storage. For those that are doing a lot of high performance editing but want to save a few dollar bills, look at the 16-inch MacBook Pro with the M1 Max, 10 cores of CPU, 24 cores of GPU, 32 gigs of RAM, and a one terabyte SSD. And then finally, for you guys that want to ball out, you want that kick-ass machine that's going to be with you for the next couple years, and maybe then some, look at the 16-inch MacBook Pro with the M1 Max chip, 10 cores of CPU, 32 core GPU, 64 terabytes of RAM, and a two terabyte SSD. That's all I got for this episode of the vlog. I just wanted to get on here and talk about a computer that might fit your editing needs. I know it's been kind of hard to decipher and really try to determine how much computer is really needed for our workflows. And again, it is very individual specific. It's hard to answer these things. Um, I would consider doing your own research. I think Larry's um, blog post has been incredibly insightful. I'll put it in the comments or I'll put it in the description below. If you have thoughts on what the best computer is for you and potentially others, please put it in the comments below. I would love to hear your thoughts. I'd love to be educated, especially if I got something wrong. There is a chance that I got my facts wrong. It's happened before, but um, I'm willing to say that openly here on the channel because I know that it's the right thing to do. Um, that's all we got for this episode of the vlog. But as always, create, share, and sustain the life that you want. Get out there and make some awesome work. Thanks, guys.